Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you would never ask. Today is, let's do the whole darn weekend. Saturday the 4th of April is National Chicken Cordon Bleu Day. Those are yummy. Oh, yum. Uh, National Hug a News Person Day. Not this no, year. Thanks. Keep a distance. <laughs> Jeep Day, uh, 4 4, so it's 4 by 4 day. Uh, it's also National School Librarian Day, National Vitamin C Day. Everybody should celebrate uh-huh. that this year. Um, also, National Walk Around Things Day, National Love Our Children Day, National... Ha- Wait a minute. That should be every year, shouldn't it? <laughs> every day of the year, National Love Our Children Day, National Handmade Day, and National Education and Sharing Day. Sunday, the fifth day of April, uh, National First Contact Day. It is also Gold Star Spouses Day, National Caramel or Caramel Day. National Deep Dish Pizza Day, Flash Drive Day, Go for Broke Day, National Nebraska Day, National Raisin and Spice Bar Day, Read a Roadmap Day, and Geologist Day. All of those things happening this weekend. And I have a guest from the Travel Channel. Katrina Weidman is a paranormal researcher, and she's got a new show on the Travel Channel called Portals to Hell. Wait a minute, what? Who wants to go there? Second season just started recently. I'm excited to chat with her about this show. I've got a lot of questions. If you grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you should consider joining us for this amazing vacation. My wife and I have been to this event the last three years, and we've had a blast. Join us at The Sands. Hear amazing music from Billy Idol. Cheap Trick. Belinda Carlisle. Little River Band. The Hooters. Tesla. Howard Jones. And many more. Plus, meet awesome stars from movies and TV. It's the best week ever. Learn more right now at thesands.rocks. That's thesands.rocks. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. A new survey found that New York City is facing a shortage of rescue dogs. People have been adopting them like crazy during the lockdown. So they're uh, that's good. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people are rescuing dogs that need help. So that's awesome. A uh, shortage of rescue dogs. I wouldn't Again, say that's a shortage. I mean, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I think so, too. So It's not like saying we need more rescue dogs. No, I don't think anyone's saying they need more. But they're just saying that people are wanting to rescue dogs. And they're like, um, we're all out, which is a nice thing. It's a very good study today or survey from surveys and studies and such brought to you by bettercreditcards.com not all credit cards are created equally some cards have higher rates some have annual fees some are just not very good often people will sign up for these because that's all they qualify for but if you've done that it may be time to get a better credit card over time your situation can change then you could qualify for a better credit card one that offers you a better rate or one that offers miles points cash back or whatever is the best fit for you check it out for free at bettercreditcards.com. That's bettercreditcards.com. This is your Brain on Drugs, brought to you by timeforrehab.com. According to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department in Arkansas, Stephen Glover is facing charges after attempting to smuggle drugs and paraphernalia uh, paraphernalia, uh, into the WC Dub Brazil Detention Center. So he's trying to take drugs to jail. Okay. Conducting a surveillance of the outer perimeter, they uh, observed Glover approaching a gate, attempting to cut the gate. So he was trying to break into jail. They approached oh, him. weird. He attempted to flee, but as soon as he was app- apprehended, they recovered several vacuum-sealed bags of tobacco and other big packages of uh, bugler tobacco, rolling papers, three cell phones, five ecstasy pills. He's charged with attempted, attempted furnishing of prohibited articles, fleeing instrument of crime, and possession of controlled substances with a person, purpose to deliver ecstasy. Okay. Easy for me to say. All of that stuff is a bad idea. But that is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. I've seen more and more stuff like this. Tracy Anderson, she's the personal trainer who's worked with Madonna and Gwyneth Paltrow. She's now live streaming her own workouts on Zoom during lockdown. So if you're saying, hey, you know what? Uh, while we're trying to flatten this curve, I need somebody to help me flatten my curves. Well, <laughs> she might be just the one to help. Uh, again, Tracy Anderson. And I've got a link to her uh, video or her page that has the story all about it. Uh, and she works with Madonna, Gwyneth Paltrow, a bunch of other people. Uh, that's in the show notes for today. And Savannah Guthrie made it back to the Today Show this last week after self-quarantining at home for two weeks. 
So do you suppose when she got back, everybody's like, oh, hey, I want to give you a hug. No, never mind. You stay back. So was she sick? That's why she self-quarantined yeah. or she just wanted to stay home? No, I believe she was ill. So she self-quarantined. So okay. um, that's going to do it for Big Screen, Little Screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Drinking too much can ruin your life. Alcohol and drug issues can cause problems at work, at home, and pretty much everywhere. If substance abuse has taken over your life and you want to quit, there is help. Timeforrehab.com could be the first step in the right direction for you. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find a new life beyond addiction. Your insurance company may even cover the cost to help make this happen. You can learn more now at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now the scoop of the day comes your way courtesy of insurancechicken.com. SeaWorld is going to furlough 15,000 workers indefinitely as the park closes because of coronavirus. 15,000 people at SeaWorld. Holy Mm. cow. I had no clue there were that many people there. No, me neither. So I'm assuming some of those are like part-time and some are full-time and that's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Who's going to feed the fish during this time then? We'll probably have some essential employees yeah, that will still do it. A lot of people. 101 year old Italian man was born during the Spanish flu, by the way, has recovered from the coronavirus. Okay. I love to hear stories like that. And there's media, so many of them. There are media friends who are listening. Please tell the good stories too. Exactly. I mean, they love to share the bad stories, but please, please, please tell us the good news as well. I know it's not sensational. And it's not going to, you know, keep people on the edge of their seat watching, but it's going to actually give people hope. And there's a lot of great stories out there. And I feel like they're kind of being just ignored because it's more sensational to tell, you know, the the bad news. Um, Video has gone viral of a Ukrainian bus passenger who was being attacked because he coughed on the bus. Oh, I saw this. So people just attacked the guy. Yeah. So that's the wrong thing to do, too. (laughs) You think? Just so you know. Um, not to dwell on Corona stuff, but here's another story. A study by the Associated Press has debunked, debunked over 200 COVID-19 or coronavirus remedies that have been posted to social media since the outbreak began. So there's all kinds of people saying, oh, all you have to do is this. Right. No, there's a lot more to it than that. If it was that simple, trust me, it would, it would be wonderful, but that's not the case. So if you read it online, it doesn't mean it's true. A study from John Hopkins University found that rural counties are less likely to get hit because uh, there's less people than there are in populated cities. Really? Did you have to do a study? (laughs) Thank you, John Hopkins University. Uh, The state of Florida is setting up highway checkpoints to stop all New Yorkers who are fleeing the coronavirus heading there. They're like, no, no, turn around. And Georgia's like, wait a minute, what? (laughs) (laughs) We don't want you here either. Uh, The Federal Trade Commission has received... Over 7,283 complaints about coronavirus-related scams where people have been sold so fake disgusting. cures. So disgusting. It is. Don't do that. Don't, don't fall for it, first of all. But don't scam people. In our time of need, this is a terrible time to do that. Any time is a bad time to scam people. But isn't that just sick? It is. It's sick really and bad. wrong. It is. And uh, one final story here. Uh, political insiders now believe the coronavirus could force us to expand our mail-in voting options. So they're saying that, hey... I don't like that at yeah, all. Yeah, but they're going, oh, you know, since it's not safe to go out, we should just no, be able to mail it in. It'll be safe to go out. Should be by then. Yep. I'd say that would be a really good thing to have everything all back in order by then. We have to. Have to, yeah. I've got a link to all of these stories and more in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Introducing insurancechicken.com. <laughs> Why insurancechicken.com? Why not? Another insurance company has a duck, one has an emu, and that other company has a lizard. So insurancechicken.com is no more silly than any of those. Is it time for you to cross the road for your insurance? Don't be chicken. Check out insurancechicken.com. We'll help you peck out the best insurance rates we can find at insurancechicken.com. That's insurancechicken.com. Our guest today, Katrina Weidman, a paranormal researcher and investigator. She's had several television programs that have to do with this topic. She rose to national recognition in her role on A&E's Paranormal State. She's now got a new program on the Travel Channel, and she's working with Jack Osborne for a show called Portals to Hell. They wrapped up Season 1 and started Season 2 on Friday the 13th of March. What are some of the things you guys do on this show? We just are on Travel Channel, we went to a place called the Old Potting Jail in Ohio, 
And there's a lot of rumors about what really happened there, and a lot of people believe there's a, a couple of different cover-ups that happened within the jail. People also believe that it was haunted. So Jack and I went to go check it out, and we actually we had this uh, network of stone cells that they don't have any record of, and they're not sure what they were used for. And there was one that was still sealed up, so Jack and I called in a demolition crew, and they actually opened the last cell for us, and we found a pile of bones. We had them sent out to, oh gosh, I can't remember her official title, but a bone expert. Most of the bones turned out to be animals except for two of them, and they could not be identified as animals. So I, I would say that was probably one of the more crazy experiences we've had. And we also had some unexplainable things happen there, and the current owner of the jail, uh, she has security cameras set up everywhere, and she's captured some really weird phenomena like objects moving on their own you know definitely a an interesting place for sure so for people who watch season one how is season two different so well i mean there's more episodes which is great so jack and i are going to a lot more locations we're going to kind of the scariest biggest baddest places you can go the ones that i guess maybe aren't you know the prisons or the asylums they still have their unique stories so whether that's history or eyewitness accounts or really crazy activity that they have. We're lucky that because we've been doing this for so long, there's a lot of location owners that are very welcoming to us. So there's a lot of places that we're going to that have never been investigated on television before. So that's also something that people can look forward to, seeing new locations. So as people are watching this program from home and they think, man, I want to go do that, what kind of advice do you give them before they embark on this little journey? Uh, Make sure you have permission. Definitely don't want to go anywhere where there might be somebody kind of keeping a watchful eye and you don't have permission to be there. That could end very badly. But, you know, you do want to be careful. I think one of the things that gets overlooked is that a lot of these places aren't necessarily up to code. So I've fallen down the steps multiple times. I've sprained my ankle four times doing this stuff. Get sick a lot because there's debris everywhere. Not only are you dealing with the unknown that you have to kind of keep your eyes peeled for, but also very much the natural elements of the building. Now on the show, you and Jack Osborne are co-hosts. Did you two work together before this program as well? Yes, so we knew of each other. You know, obviously I knew who Jack was and he knew who I was because he used to have a show on Sci-Fi Channel about ghost hunting and he used to watch the first show that I was part of called Paranormal Sea. When he was putting together this project, he reached out to me and we met up and we talked for a very long time about our views in the paranormal and what we wanted to do with this project and we were very much in tune with what we thought. And so it was really just a natural progression to work with each other. So that's kind of how it all happened. So for this program, are there some places you'd like to explore that you're not able to get into? Some of the locations, though, you run into red tape with them. So, um, you know, like some of the older prisons or asylums, um, they're still owned by the town or the state. A couple of hoops you have to jump through to try to get into buildings like that. There's other buildings that they don't want associations with the paranormal just yet. They're still kind of weary of, of that. There's still a stigma around that word. So there's, there's certain locations in America, but I think, you know, Europe would be amazing. And the U.K., I, I spent some time investigating over in the U.K. and I had uh, phenomenal experiences. And it's funny, they're, they're much more open in general to talking about the paranormal than I think Americans are. And if you think about it, you know, when... I have a friend who's from, from England, and we were talking about it, and he was saying how when you think about it, like when you're growing up in England, every location, every historic location has a ghost story attached to it, so you're always kind of exposed to it, you know, where here in America, that's not necessarily the case. Um, so, I, you know, I would love to go back over there and explore some of their castle. That does sound like fun. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat with us, and you be safe out there. Yeah, thank you. Katrina Weidman, the program is on Travel Channel. It's called Portals to Hell. Season 2 is on now. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. If you grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you should consider joining us for this amazing vacation. My wife and I have been to this event the last three years, and we've had a blast. Join us at The Sands. Hear amazing music from Billy Idol. Cheap Trick. Belinda Carlisle. Little River Band. The Hooters. Tesla. Howard Jones. And many more. Plus, meet awesome stars from movies and TV. It's the best week ever. Learn more right now at thesands.rocks. That's thesands.rocks. 
Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? This is a cool story. One man survived two atomic bombs. I've talked to him about him before. Uh, Tsutomi Yamaguchi survived two different attacks in Japan. Oh, yeah, we did talk about During this World guy. War II. August 6th, 1945, he saw the first atomic bomb dropped. Miraculously, he survived, burns across his face and arms, made it home from Hiroshima to Nagasaki. Three days later, he was just in the middle of telling everybody what had happened. Yeah. Another bomb drop, flattened his home because his family was out finding ointments to treat his burns. They were all safe. They were in a tunnel, and miraculously, they all survived as well. Nice. So this guy survived two. So there you go. Lucky fella. I would say so. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This is today's fun fact. Not all credit cards are created equally. Some cards have higher rates, some have annual fees, some are just not very good. Often people will sign up for these because that's all they qualify for. But if you've done that, it may be time to get a better credit card. Over time, your situation can change. Then you could qualify for a better credit card, one that offers you a better rate, or one that offers miles, points, cash back, or whatever is the best fit for you. Check it out for free at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, a news headline from somewhere in this world, Dateline Vietnam. Could be a first for us. Have we had a Vietnam story? I don't think so. Um, A Vietnamese airline is promising to pay customers $8,000 if they catch coronavirus during a flight. I think we should go on a trip to Vietnam. (laughs) I am not going to Vietnam. (laughs) No, but what they're doing, I think that's a cool thing. They're saying, hey, it's safe to travel. We're doing everything we need to do to make sure it's safe to travel. And if you travel with us, and catch the coronavirus, we're going to give you eight grand. So there are some people who are like, okay, I'll eight go Eight grand then. won't even cover the price of your funeral. Well, you never know. It could. Depends. My funeral, I don't need anything extravagant. Just throw me in a shoebox or something. I'm good. Maybe uh, cremate me first. I was going to say. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't fit in a shoebox. <laughs> this has been a news headline from somewhere in this world. Drinking too much can ruin your life. Alcohol and drug issues can cause problems at work, at home, and pretty much everywhere. If substance abuse has taken over your life and you want to quit, there is help. Timeforrehab.com could be the first step in the right direction for you. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find a new life beyond addiction. Your insurance company may even cover the cost to help make this happen. You can learn more now at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. A New Jersey p- couple has been arrested for allegedly stealing six golden retriever puppies worth about five grand. 41-year-old Jeff, uh, Jennifer Goldthwaite and a 20-year-old Christopher Gordon busted at a dog breeder in Pennsylvania, told police they were trying to enter his property and steal his French bulldog puppies that were for sale. Responding officers found Goldthwait in a car outside the breeder's home. Gordon was wa- uh, walking up to the vehicle. A man who called the police identified the pair as people who took a look at the young pooches earlier in the day. Then they came back. Officers spotted a box inside the car with six golden retriever puppies. Goldthwait insisted the pups belonged to her. Detectives got in touch with other breeders in the area. They found out, nope, they'd been stolen. The breeder didn't even realize they had been dog napped until the police called and they wow. went and checked and they're like, uh, no, yep, yeah, those I had. are ours. They're gone. The pair were charged with burglary and theft and criminal conspiracy and have been released from custody after posting twenty five thousand dollar bail. So, if you've got twenty five grand, why are you why out are you stealing, stealing puppies? puppies? Exactly. But that's probably why they have twenty five grand. Probably. And whoever they ripped off for that should get their money back too. Wow, what a weird story. It's why it's today's weird news. Now your moment of duh, brought to you by insurancechicken.com. A 23-year-old Texas man arrested for lying about testing positive for the new coronavirus. He told investigators he did it as a social experiment. See, he was trying to trying to get himself out of trouble here. Michael Lane Brandon of Woodville, East Texas, was charged with false alarm or report a Class A misdemeanor. Tyler District Attorney Lucas Babin said uh, he intentionally posted on Facebook that he had tested positive for COVID-19. Sadly, that caused a panic, and it tied up phone lines at the hospital in that community. He told investigators that he made the post as a, quote, social experiment to make the point that not everything one reads online can be believed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, sure. I'm sure that's what you were doing. District attorney posted earlier in the week that anything like this could be a criminal offense. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen there, but he's in a whole mess of trouble. So maybe don't do that. 
Kathy Griffin. I mean, uh, what was his <laughs> name again? Didn't she do the same thing? Pretty much. She did something almost identical to that. But this guy, again, Lucas. No, no, Lucas was the gentleman. Michael Lane Braden. That's who it was. He's our moment of da. Introducing InsuranceChicken.com. <laughs> Why InsuranceChicken.com? Why not? Another insurance company has a duck, one has an emu, and that other company has a lizard. So insurancechicken.com is no more silly than any of those. Is it time for you to cross the road for your insurance? Don't be chicken. Check out insurancechicken.com. We'll help you peck out the best insurance rates we can find at insurancechicken.com. That's insurancechicken.com. Time now for fake news or Florida. At this point in the program, I read a little story, a little headline, and then my beautiful bride, Heidi, has to guess, is this a true story from the great state of Florida, or is it hashtag fake news made up just to trick you and amuse me? All righty. Heidi, tell me, fake news or Florida? A Walmart manager in Florida was arrested for shoplifting $25,000 worth of spam over the course of five years after security uncovered an elaborate smuggling operation. Fake news or Florida? Fake news. That is fake news. That was a lot of stuff. That was a lot. And who's going to steal that much spam? Oh, our son. I mean, I could see if I I probably would have said Florida if you would have said something like, you know, high end stakes or something like that. But no, no, this was uh, spam. There was a story about a lady who got arrested for stealing ham. She worked in a deli, and like when they would slice yeah, the ham, she would just eat a piece. She would from take time a piece of ham every once in a while to make sure that it was okay or whatever. Oh, and no, like, just because she wanted to munch like $6, on it. Six thousand dollars worth of ham it's, over years. I'm sure it was like, not. Oh, but wow. that's fine. So yeah, this uh, I didn't make this up, but it is fake news. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news. I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of bettercreditcards.com. And there are some people right now, again, during the darkest times, the stars will shine the brightest. And there's some awesome stars out there who are shining bright. And I want to say, before I even read this story, there are a ton of stars that we don't know about. Mm Mm-hmm. Because so many people just do something good and nobody posts about it because they don't put out press releases. They didn't do, you know, a press conference, any of that stuff. So, again, not to diminish what I'm going to talk about here, but I do want to make sure I say thank you to the people who are checking on their neighbors. Thank you to the people who are doing all kinds of good things and not getting any exposure at all in the media. But uh, I also want to say thank you to former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. He personally delivered a cargo of 50,000 masks to doctors in hospitals in Los Angeles. And there's a a picture of him holding this box full of masks, and he's got one of the masks on as he's delivering. And there's pictures here from all these different companies that help support these and uh, supply these. And uh, it says, uh, supporters of the Frontline Responders Fund, it was done through GoFundMe, help raise money for desperately needed equipment during the COVID-19 crisis. Doctors, nurses, and hospital staff are the real action heroes, Arnold Schwarzenegger says. He says, I just play one in movies. We have an opportunity and a responsibility to provide them with the personal protective equipment right now to keep them safe as they fight this virus. So he said, when I heard about this plan, I said it was a no-brainer. So he uh, helped raise, it says the cause has raised over $5 million to date, including a $1 million directly from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, Last week's fundraiser, uh, there were 60,000 surgical masks, 34,000 gloves, 2,000 surgical gowns, 50 thermometers. All that went to San Francisco's Department of Public Health. So they're helping all kinds of people in their state there. I think that's really cool. It is cool. People helping people. And I had somebody just ask the other day. They said uh, on Facebook, a friend of mine said, anybody have any like positive news that came out of this? And I chimed in right away and I said, yeah, you get so to see many how many stories. awesome people there are out there. And mm-hmm. everybody else was saying, you know, silly things. But I was like, no, I'm going to be serious for a minute here. I'm not going to be silly. I'm I'm so proud of the people who went above and beyond and, and again, 
hats off to you if you're doing that. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. What's left of it? We appreciate you joining us right here on The John and Heidi Show.